welcome my for the passion not the fashion the youtube channel like subscribe and share welcome vincent hi <coughs> Box. hey uh i'm here with vincent Koreman, a very known guy in the tilburg scene dutch elite <laughs> <laughs> no hey yeah uh, we don't talk about elites eh? we, no, uh, no, no, we no. talk about people eh? Yeah. Just old people. Uh, old people, okay. If you, how older you get, the I'm more people <laughs> will know you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, uh, Vincent, uh, please introduce yourself to our viewers. Yes, I'm uh, Vincent Koreman, or Vince yeah. for short. And uh, I'm the guitar player and singer for Dark Omen. And uh, I played in lots of, lot, lots of other bands, and we'll probably talk about them right now. Um, known and unknown. Yeah. Known and unknown. Uh, some well, you will probably recognize my name, like Nihil, Power Voice, maybe it's Revoltas, uh, and uh, some old bands as well. We will talk about those as well. So, um, well, let's get into it. Yes. Well, uh, what age you start listening heavy music? Um, I think I started, the first thing I, re I can remember music-wise is listening to a cassette tape um, when I was, I think, uh, 12 or 13. And it was a cassette tape with one set, side had uh, Elvis and the other side had the Beatles. I think that was my first real memory of music that I was really excited about. But when I listened, started listening to heavy music, I think it was, uh, I was 14 or 13. And a guy from my block just rang my, rang, rang my doorbell and he said, hey, I'm Marco, he was also called Marco, uh, and he said, I am Marco, I, I also like heavy metal, <laughs> and I hear you I hear you also oh, like metal. You are 12? Yeah, 13, uh, yeah. And uh, so he, we, we just were friends from then. It's like, uh, Is he still around? Yeah, yeah. He's around. Yeah, he's, uh, he, now, now he lives in Colombia, he's wow. married, he, he's, he, uh, th th totally, totally different career path, but uh, we're still friends. And uh, we just bonded over the fact that we both uh, saw each other buy the Archbok in the local uh, store. And that people have to, that the, that the owners of the store have to say that you have to buy it and not read yeah, it. Yeah, no, don't, yeah, it's, we're not <laughs> that's a library. Like, yeah. that's, that's what they told me as well. Yeah, yeah. Kerrang also, I never bought the Kerrang, I always read it in yeah. the paper scene. And Sometimes uh, when I had like uh, extra money somehow, I just like, maybe I have enough to buy something, you know. Uh, sometimes, I, very rarely, yes, I, I can sometimes buy the Kerrang, but mostly I uh, just bought Artsbrook and then yeah. read it like every every word. But also the bad, the bad bands were also very good, cool, huh? Yeah, of course. <laughs> the bad critics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> everything, the demos, the, uh, yeah, the, the ads, I uh, just read everything. Yeah. Uh, and that was at your age of 12. Yeah, 12, 12 13, I think, something okay. like that. And then I got a guitar and I, uh, when I was uh, 14. And then it was just I was just lost okay. to the world. I was just, just you, music forever. You come from Dongen, eh? Yeah, I come from a small town called Dongen. And it's near to Tilburg and Breda, in yeah, the middle. In the middle, yeah. yeah. And uh, but we, we actually were very close to a place called Oosterhout. True. And uh, I I bring that up because that was the most important thing in that time for me to discover new music was the library in Oosterhout, because mm -hmm. they had a record department that you could borrow vinyl for like a 50 cents uh, record. And uh, that's where I uh, got like Dio and uh, Rainbow, all stuff like that. They all had, they had a pretty good collection of rock. It was like a rock section. And uh, I had to go by bike, it was, uh, half an hour there and half an hour back and to get like five, the most you could, you could borrow was four or five records, I think. And I just, I just went every week and got new records, put them on a tape and then brought them back and, and then new records, put them on tape, this endless cycle of listening to vinyl for uh, hard rock vinyl for the first time. It's uh, magic instead of like going to YouTube or Spotify. And yeah, because you, you, you also have to make a different choices when you're standing there and you're looking at this, the artwork, you go like, I can only take four or something, you know, like, hmm, yeah, I have this, this big stack and then you have to sort them out, like, I think this one, I think this one. So it's also like a, like a guess and a, you don't know the bands, most of the bands, so you're just gonna, going by the artwork. It was very important to make a good artwork. It was like. very important, yeah, yeah. That's what Iron Maiden made big, I think. I think so as well. I think that's... that's uh, they are good bands as well. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah but that, that, that really matters, I think. Uh, the first moment that you look at the, the artwork and go like, yes, wow, this looks really cool, I think. I had that with Slayer, Show the Mercy. 
yeah i saw that and then the the, the cross uh, the, the upside down and then yeah, the yeah. painting and and uh, at Halloween, the coke sniffers and <laughs> all kinds of things. Like it was really yeah. like, ah, this is violence, this is aggression, this yeah. is metal. And that's why I bought that. I mean, and then I, when I look back, I always the records I bought, yeah. all bought on the cover, like Ingrid Malmsteen with the trilogy, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Halloween with the great cover, yeah, Anthrax yeah. with the with the with the cartoons on it, Iron Maiden, Slayer. It was all at that age that yeah. you bought it on the cover. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and for some reason, I, you asked me to bring some records that are yeah. important to me. And most of them have really not so good artwork. So, But I don't know why that is. But uh, for some reason, I, the best artwork are not, not really the records I kind of remember for, for, for my youth. We'll this talk about uh, it yeah, later, we probably. talk about it later because yeah. this uh, artwork is also <laughs> is it, uh, self-made. Yeah, because the original sleeve got destroyed and uh, I only had the vinyl, so I, I just draw what, from memory what I think was was, the, was kind of the cover. Yeah. Uh, and it was just like, okay. just, my, just my version of the now, Well, the I have to show, uh, because I know a lot of people in Germany, <laughs> uh, Mike, Smeer, uh, <laughs> Peppy, Ventor, look. What this guy made. This is, uh, this is my this impression is of the destruction sleeve. I only saw it like a like a uh, steam uh, like a special minute. press, <laughs> limited edition. <laughs> I just had to make something for it, so I just I think I, was Very, I think uh, it would be a really cool. It's a really cool limited edition. Uh. <laughs> Hands drawn, limited Hands edition. Hands drawn. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, we're gonna talk about uh, your first band. All right. Which year was it? Uh, I think that same year when I was 14, I started a, like a hardcore punk band called. Which year? I think. They saved the. Around 86, I think. 85, mm -hmm. 86. Okay. And uh, we were called Crisis. Oh. And Crisis? Crisis. Crisis, yeah. And our, our, we had no goal just but to be the fastest. Band and loudest band in our in Dunge, like in our hometown. Small town. So uh, we just the, the people are playing in the band were not all, not really punk because Perry was drumming and he was oh he was also he, he had, already he had, in the band. Yeah, he had like long metal hair, and uh, but the bass player was like a rockabilly guy and the singer was like a new wave guy. So just just kind of uh, all the alternative people of the Dunge town. kind of formed that band. So. Okay. Uh, we have only a few of these guys. Yeah, we only have we only had a few of these guys. Yeah, and I think all of them started bands. I think that's that's kind of weird that uh, there was like eight guys doing it, like uh, listen to punk and listen to metal. And we all started bands. There was also like a, an older group of guys, like uh, that were all, also listening to metal. But for our age group, we we like to we were like the only eight nine guys or something like that. And that was the first band. That was the first band, and. Uh, the, from that band, we started a second band called uh, Stillborn, yeah. which was uh, oh, you have the demo here. What a coincidence, Marco! And not not from you, eh? No, he bought it. That well, when did you buy it? I have it already twenty years. Yeah. So That's maybe in some uh, some uh, maybe some at a show uh, could be. Uh, I wasn't at Stillborn shows in the late eighties. So okay. But maybe uh, maybe I. Uh, found it somewhere in a box where somebody throw his demos away <laughs> you know you had those people <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there was a stillborn tape in it and uh yeah well uh, shall we already talk about stillborn now yeah why not yeah stillborn can you uh, show the artwork to the viewers yeah, it's, it's it's kind of uh, hard to see what it what the uh, dii it's like a it's like a what do you call it burial ground a cemetery. It's very tasteful, <laughs> very tasteful artwork. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we recorded this like in a borrowed four-track recorder, and uh, we played. They play a lot of shows actually with uh, on the basis of the demo. Yeah. At the time, uh, death metal shows were uh, were get, getting more popular. And end of the eighties. End of the eighties, yeah. And uh, so we played. Uh, we played a, a great bunch of shows, and then. Um, we started working on like a, an, an album and then we never kind of made it happen or something. And then <laughs> that was it. So we had the demo and that was basically 
this this one is recorded in '89, I think. So, uh, and I heard uh, it's coming uh, to CD. We are uh, working <laughs> on that. Huh? I heard that uh, there's a label called uh, Headbangers Records. Headbangers Records that will put it to CD and also the new versions of the old songs because we record we recorded some of the old songs. And so uh, that's really for the Dutchies, and uh, the originals are for the Germans. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. <laughs> probably, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably it's like this, you probably, know? Probably, yeah. yeah. We're gonna do that. Uh, yeah, we, uh, you, I think we, you can expect this uh, at the end of the year. Yeah. So stay tuned for www.headbangerscene.nl I think you have also a Facebook page for Stillborn, right? Yeah. You can also tell the people. It's uh, Stillborn Death Metal, what else? Yeah. Uh, and there's also, I guess the, um, uh, there's, I think it's Stillborn Death Metal or Stillborn Dot Death Metal, but uh, we'll, we'll make sure you have that info when the, when the album is, re is ready. So don't worry about it. it it's really, so both really demos, nice. Both demos and... Uh, yeah, both demos and uh, uh, re-recorded versions of the old stuff because yeah, we have better equipment now and better studio, so now it's easier for us to to uh, re-record it in the way it should should have sounded in '89. Uh, so I think it's it's really something special. And there's also a special artwork coming, or is it? Uh, yeah, there's a special artwork coming by. I don't uh, know yet. So you know, I have promised him <laughs> the deal, but I don't know what's going to happen with my release, but his release on my label. Uh, I have to pay it, but I don't know what I'm going to pay. You know. We get something really nice. Though. Okay, okay. No, but there's a uh, there's an uh, artist called Warhead. Uh, he does a lot of uh, artwork for uh, death and black metal bands, and he uh, he has made something really cool. Mm -hmm. So it will be very nice and. Uh, I think it would be uh, like a nice document of, of Dutch death metal in the uh, late 80s. And yeah. um, I don't know how much of it has been uh, kept. 500 you know, we make. No, no, but I mean from other bands. I don't know if other bands still have their demos and stuff like that. Because I remember there was like a boom of bands around that era. Um, and a lot of them just are forgotten right now. Yeah. So I'm very happy that we get the chance to do this. Reissue it. Yeah. Yeah, because we are in this area of Tilburg, Tilburg, Kaatsheuvel, Dongen, uh, Lone of Sand. Uh, it was Tilburg and uh, the villages around. And uh, I think that we had some, uh, uh, where what the Krostigum people were more like Hilva and Beek area. Yeah. So this, uh, this area of uh, Tilburg had a really promising death metal scene in the late 80s, early 90s, I think. Yeah. At, we uh, lo the most uh, bands. There are a lot of bands who were forgotten, but there are a few bands who are still around, like Acrosticon. You might know the band with the woman on the vocals, Corinne. Yeah. Then you had also Anthropomorphia. It started as Lagaya, I think. Lagaya, yeah. I have the demos here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were talking about Dutch local yeah. death metal bands. Demo bands. Demo bands, yeah. Well, there's quite a few actually. Yeah. Uh, I think this one, this one is uh, some is something I really remember because uh, you, I think we played together or not. We uh, we definitely knew each other. This yeah. is Lagaya. Marco Stubbe. Marco Stubbe is now in Antipomorphia. And Ferry. Also. Ferry was he also in uh, this band? I don't think so. This Stip, uh, Stip, yeah, Stip was in. Carlo, in, uh, Marco. Carlo, Ma Carlo Hever. Carlo Hever. Yeah. And uh, he went on to Crusta Crystal Lake, and then yeah. Crystal Crustacean. Yeah. And what else do you have? You uh, have I had uh, this uh, this more uh, more. It was a, a special. It was not the, the rough kind of death metal. It was more the uh, how you call it the, the symphonic death metal. This is the lost in misery. You know, maybe. You were you were there. I was only a, a kid uh, who was banging on his <laughs> sleeping room. And uh, but tell me, uh, lost the misery. You can tell a little bit about it. I have to I have to really dig back because this is a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, it was more like uh, they were like, they were a little big bit uh, uh, older than. Uh, than uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah. Than I, I was so, a bit, bit older. Yeah. And uh, they were also a little bit uh, like more professional. Look at this. They have like. Uh, they have a very professional looking in, uh, printed in, inside sleeve and we were all and fucking a, around with uh, an original with a, cassette. Yeah, and like a cassette with 
print, and it was recorded at the studio of uh, Vengeance. Uh, Oscar Oscar Holloman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it sounded good, and it was uh, like a, a really promising band. From uh, Tilburg. For, yeah, from Wild Was, Nancy, Tilburg. was Nancy also in it? No, yeah. That's not Nancy, yeah. No, I don't know. Because I thought she was the uh, Indonesian look, I thought it was maybe Nancy. But her husband was in it, huh? It was the name of her husband? Oh, wait. I think the uh, her husband. Rob. All right. Rob and Nancy, yeah. Rob and Nancy. Yeah. Rob was in it, yeah. Yeah, that was lost the misery. Whatever happened to them? Uh, they were, were planned to record an album, I think. I have to ask Rob and Nancy. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, ask them sometime. Yeah. This is uh, Motra. Motra. We also know. Very very nice logo as well. I really like that. Um, oh. Tell me. Tell me about that and I'm going to get a, a single in the in the hall. In, in between you telling about Motra, okay? Okay. Well, Motra is actually, this is a little bit later. Uh, 93, I think. 92, 93. And they're from Mill, which is also our area, Brabant. Uh, it's all pretty local. Um, and they already, had, they already had like, I think I already heard them on the radio sometime. They had, uh, there was a Dutch show called uh, Varas Fuwe. And I'm pretty sure I heard this demo on there. It was already like, uh, also a little, a little bit more professional with like printing and stuff like that. And as you can see, we just, we were just fucking around with Xerox still in Dongen. And what, what do you have? This is a bowl. This is a bowl. <laughs> Maybe we can tell a little bit about that. Oh, Jesus. Was, what, what, there was... Uh, is that it was with... Uh, Rich, uh, Richard? From Richard the, Schouten. Richard from Macrosico. And... Uh, uh, Hoek. Uh, Edwin Hoek. Yeah. And... Uh, Jan. Yeah. It's like very old school. Jan de Gier. Jan de Gier, Jan de Gier yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very old school. Grind Death. Grind Death. Uh, like also, this is like a cult classic, I think. Mm -hmm. Some bowels, like. Uh, Please ask uh, Richard to, to let me release it. I want to release <laughs> it, but he didn't want it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have any. Because, uh, no, it's, uh, I don't know, it was a uh, reason he didn't want it. But I think I, a lot of people would love to have it. I think so as well, because it's, this is really uh, something a lot of people have been looking for. I think this is recorded with a drum machine. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. But uh, there was a drummer. There was a drummer, yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of nice. And it's also nice that you have it framed yeah. you know, in the wall because of Because special Tilburg. And I also, uh, well, we're going to talk about the demos later, continue with where we are talking about frame. I also framed this one. It's not a no, It's We yeah. are a little bit, yeah, what? Maybe we can talk about that later. Because yeah, sure. the Devil's Plot is uh, some local, uh, local creme de la creme. Eh? Yeah, but it's already very beyond local, I think. Nice. Nah, it's, it's, it's local it's, Brabant. It's local Brabant, yeah. yeah. But if, look at this. This I think this is first a single. very nice sleeve. The first single. I like the style. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. We can put it there and yeah, then. Uh, yeah. We can continue with uh, the the demo uh, talk. PK. <laughs> Oh god, DK. Okay. They have it. Can they also out the Huawei K7 also area? It's, it's recorded around here. Yeah, true. Do you know the guys? No. I also not. But I have a demo, but. DK. DK. I know the name and I know that they, they're around and they're playing. Yeah. But there were so many bands at that time, it was like. I do like that they have uh, this very similar. Xerox style sleeve with a band photo and a logo drawn on it, and it's uh, 016 21. So their their area code is, uh, I think, uh, also very local. Yeah. I think it's Gilzo or something, or Rijen. Yeah, 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 I think so. And then this band, you put, put this band, but it's not a logo. It's from Alfa and Rijn. You know the band, this sect. Yeah, but it, it, it just put it away because it's not local. Okay, and you can tell about uh, that the, the, that that uh, that band. This is uh, yeah, this is this is very. Oh, wow, you even have, have the inlays. This is uh, local heroes acoustical, yeah. which are uh, of course known, and they are very very played internationally. They released internationally, 
But this is, I think this is this the first demo. I think so. Yeah. And this has just been re-released. Yeah, by I think, uh, on a on a Spanish label. Yeah? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another. I think the second biggest band in our area. Uh -huh. It's. Uh, this is the uh, Anthropomorphia, or Metal Blade, actually. Uh, what can we tell? It's one of my, the band of one of my best friends, Stip. Mm -hmm. He was a bass player. He's not, the band is still active without Stip at the moment. Yeah. But this is Anthropomorphia, and this is their uh, demo, uh, their old stuff, you know. You see? Uh, this right. is, anyway, this is. Uh, they are very old stuff with Vincent, uh, Vincent van Bokstel, Marco, Stip, Ferry. Yeah, and this yeah. is uh, very old stuff. Mid 90s, I think. No, it's earlier. Earlier. But it's reissued uh, in 2011. So yeah, this it's is nice uh, that they. Uh, yeah. It's a really nice package as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The artwork is really nice. It has like a full out sleeve. Yeah, it's very good. And then, uh, it's limited to 500. Yeah. Really nice. And there was also a band called Spina Bifida. I have the CD, but I uh, somewhere here. But that was also a band who had some potential. They also uh, released a couple. Of also on the Spanish one record, label. Spanish yeah, label which was too. pretty uh, good, really, really good reviews. It was super slow. Yeah, doom death metal. Doom yeah. death metal. Like it was really nice. And a good vocalist yeah. as well. And then uh, I also have to tell uh, when I was a child. Uh, I had uh, I met Twan van Gil when we were really little, and we started the band Golf Ball, uh, Black Adder, and Black Adder turned out to Golf Ball, and Golf Ball split, and then it was Flash Mitsin and Anthropomorphia, and anyway, Golf Ball was the band I grew up with. I was at nearly every show with Twan and all the guys, and I I feel it like it's also a little bit my band. It was not my band, but. You know, I started playing music with Twan and that turned out to Gothmore. And that was the youngest generation of the old yeah. scene, eh? Actually, I think yeah? so, yeah, yeah. I yeah. am part of, I'm the youngest of the older guys. Youngest of the... Uh, of <laughs> youngest the, of the old generation. Youngest of the old generation, yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. But uh, we came up in the 90s as children. Yeah. And that was together with bands like Sauron, yeah. uh, Gothmore. First Satire. Satire, yeah, yeah, with, uh, with uh, Tim Franke. Yeah. And, yeah. That was, uh, and Martijn van Gelderen. And, this is my generation, Nick Sumer, uh, Tom, yeah. you know, that's the, the little boys of the 90s, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that's Golf, golf For More. Really and, good, uh, yeah. really nice. This is the uh, little bit the history of uh, extreme uh, metal in uh, till 1997, till yeah, this, this like the, that. the first 10 years, yeah. let me say that. And then, then it was kind of splintering yeah. and uh, grunge happened and everybody was very flannel. Then we also have to talk about uh, because that was death metal, but you also were uh, you were always very open-minded with music, so you were also uh, connected to the hardcore scene. And we already talked about We Deny. Yeah. Uh, I also released, by the way. Uh, their CD is still available. Uh, but first, I want to maybe I want to tell a little bit about We Deny later because I still have copies, so important to have a little promotion talk. But first, I'm gonna skip to the uh, to your bands, your right. really known bands. Yeah. How? Uh, tell me about Nihil, Powerwise, Travoltas, Dark Omen, and everything what's in between. Just okay. go, go nuts. I think uh, a good way to start this is after still. I'm just gonna do it chronologically, kind of. Yeah. With uh, Ulbi Bessie. We started with uh, Stillborn and Crisis. The Crisis was a punk band, Stillborn was the death metal band. Uh, and just around the same time, 91, we also started uh, like a fast punk band called Travoltas. Mm -hmm. um, was it already American style at the time? It was a more hardcore punk style. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, very fast, very up tempo, a lot of breaks. And um, we did quite well. And this was at the time that uh, John Travolta was uh, like. Uh, no totally, for, uh, totally forgotten. It was oh. after his big hits, so he was doing like uh, look, uh, uh, look who the baby is talking or something like that. Look, uh, oh, look who's talking. Look who's talking. Yeah. Stuff like was that. Was it that period? Yeah. So oh. we, were th we were thinking he will be forgotten soon. Yeah. 
yeah. and it just ripped us off, ripped off his name like uh, like we would. Um, we were thinking about the Ramones, Travolta, so like something like that. Uh, but then he made like a comeback, and it, the name kind of stuck with us. But we already were uh, releasing and albums and stuff like that. So um, then we, we went on to be quite successful. We signed to a bigger label. Yeah. We even signed to Roadrunner later, um, and we uh, released six albums, I think. With you, with me. Okay. Uh, and we toured basically all around the world. America. We did America. Yeah, like they were known in America. Yeah, which is it was really hard work to tour in America. We we played on the Vans Warped Tour in uh, I think 2002, and there was uh, there was a big stage with uh, Bad Religion and uh, uh, AFI and all the all the cool bands. And all then, the 90s bands. Yeah, the bands and then, yeah, a lot of a lot of like skate punk bands. Yeah, and uh, more fake stuff. Actually. Yeah, and there was a was a was like a smaller stage. We were playing, of course, on one of the smaller stages. We uh, were there. Oh, we were there. Yeah, yeah. it was. But uh, touring, touring in America was kind of uh, kind of hard. Actually, it was really, uh, really, really rough. No sleeping places, no, no, no cash, no drinks. Just, Nothing. just survival. to play some, yeah, just survival. Just play, uh, play a show. Oh, there was uh, fourteen uh, bucks. Here's, the half is you. Half is yours. Like seven dollars for a show. And uh, we just bought. We lived off uh, like bread and peanut butter for uh, six months. <laughs> And when sometimes we played, when we sold a couple of shirts, we could buy some beer, you know. Uh, but it was really Not nice. Not saving for the band pocket, it was directly going on Just, in drinks. Yeah, it was, it was really survival at this point. Wow. So, um, it was, but it was an unforgettable experience, it was a lot of fun. We uh, played Japan, which was really great. That was better managed. Yeah, very, very much, yeah. Uh, and uh, we did a lot of European tours, like. Uh, after each other, which is when we finished the European tour, we went back to Italy for two weeks, then we went back home, then we went on a European tour again, so it was non-stop playing. We did that for a lot of years, and that was kind of uh, the point for me when it was uh, enough. Um, I just got, I, I realized at some point that there was one song called Beaches, that was one of the early Travolta songs, and I calculated that I played it for like 2,000 times, and I was... And I just, I just, I just couldn't play it anymore. It was just like a mental uh, thing. I just couldn't do it anymore. And at that point, I decided to, uh, to stop with the band. And um, no, no, the, the, that that was uh, actually the the, um, the era when um, I produced a record by uh, an Eindhoven band called The Space. Ah, okay. <coughs> together with uh, Perry of Travoltas. We still in the Travoltas. Era. And uh, yeah. And uh, then we met, then I became really good friends with Richard, their bass player. Yeah. Uh, first we uh, recorded some demos at my place, I think it was 2000. Um, I just got, I, I realized at some point that there was one song called Beaches, that was one of the early Travolta songs, and I calculated that I played it for like 2000 times. And I was, and I just, I just, I just couldn't play it anymore, it was just like a mental uh, thing, I just couldn't do it anymore. And at that point, I decided to, uh, to stop with the band. And um, no, no, the, the, that, that was uh, actually the, the, um, the era when um, I produced a record by uh, an Eindhoven band called The Space. Ah, okay. <coughs> together with uh, Perry of Travoltas. We're still in Travoltas. Era. And, and uh, yeah, and uh, then we met, then I became really good friends with Richard, their bass player. Yeah. Uh, First, we uh, recorded some demos at my place. I think it was 2004 to 5, 2005. I don't, I don't know exactly. Which were the first Power of Ice songs. Um, we recorded four songs, and just in my living room. And uh, uh, we went to a studio to record the vocals, but I couldn't get it done. That was the cue for me to exit, and then uh, they got a they got a new uh, vocalist. Uh, and then they went on like uh, their uh, their more successful period. <laughs> and when I was playing with them, there was also a guitarist, uh, Henk de Laars from Eindhoven, who played in uh, Eindhoven, uh, a pretty famous Eindhoven metal band. And I can't, I can't remember the name. Not Cretan? Like some like a kind of symphonic heavy metal. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, it's. Uh, uh, Fuck, I forgot the name. Uh, it's progressive. 
Yeah. The guy is also isn't the guy also doing the sound at a lot of clubs in uh, Eindhoven? Could be. I don't, I, he's like a really really good guitarist. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Uh, no. He met we met him like in a bar and yeah uh, I think I know I know the band I uh, this is the band called uh, um, the very progressive trash yeah. heavy yeah oh, what's the name of that uh, it will come to us probably. yeah we and then uh, we we went to the Reese's house the drummer and we asked him to join Power of Ice uh, and um, Willem the guitarist Willem went on to form Verbuist later after Power of Ice. Is yeah. he still alive? Yeah. <laughs> you still see him? <laughs> we talk uh, online, but I haven't seen him in quite some time. Yeah, I saw him by the supermarket sometime. Yeah. Um, but uh, so that, that was kind of the beginning of that band. Yeah. And uh, for me, it was also the period when I started getting uh, uh, more into black metal. And I was rec I already had recorded some black metal, like one, one person black metal demos, you know. Uh, but I met uh, Michiel Eikenaar, uh -huh. uh, who was also uh, like a local regular guy, you know, who we met a lot of times. He uh -huh. would also be at uh, all the metal shows. And uh, we decided to form Nihil, Nihil yeah. which was uh, really good. We, were, we played in Nihil together for 13 years, and we did four albums and a couple of EPs. And uh, sadly, Michiel died in 2019. Uh, leaving a, a wife and his children, and uh, so that was also the end of Nihil for me because it was uh, I, I I see no reason to continue, you know, like. Uh, uh, yeah. You have a lot of other things to focus on. Yeah, but also because Nihil yeah. was very specifically me and Mich Michiel saw a lot of people uh, together. Link him to him also. Yeah. Always say I, if I heard about Nihil, it was very much the name I can. I was very uh, linked to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and there were more people playing in the band, like uh, semi-permanently. Uh, but for some reason, I just I just couldn't th think of anything. We were rock. We were, we had some some songs ready for an album. When he got ill, uh, and I uh, all the files I burned into a CD and I put it on his coffin uh, at uh, remember all remember all service. Yeah. And I uh, asked his brother to put it in the grave with him. So uh, that was the last stuff we did with Nihil. And then um, around the same time, I was uh, getting in touch with Richard again, some more. And uh, we were um, talking about the metal we used to like at the early 80s. Uh -huh. Like the very the same period that was like pre, pre uh, trash metal, but heavy, somewhere between heavy metal and and all the genres that were following it. Speed metal. Yeah, just, just like somewhere between metal and speed metal, there was like a, a gap of a year, a year and a half, I think, where people would just call it metal. And uh, then we started finally to work on the Dark Omen songs. Um, and re I started recording those at home uh, and uh, in the studio in Sweden with Perry from Travolta's. Yeah. Uh, we, we worked on this, this as well. That's also why it sounds so good, probably. Uh, and we're really happy with it. Four songs, and we're um, working on an album right now. It's also released by me and my friend uh, Thomas from the north, from Friesland. And uh, yeah, I think we were, well, we already have a good review in Ashok. Yeah, got a lot, lot of good reactions to it. I think uh, some good reviews in Germany as well. Yeah. So I'm very happy with it, and I'm I'm just really happy that we finally managed to make uh, uh, the like metal album that we uh, we're always, always trying to make. Uh, and this is just a this is just really the EP. Yeah. So uh, and the cover is like more like a rap kind of style. Yeah, there's a guy from uh, Indonesia who drew it. Yeah, hand drawn. I, I share too, a link too on cheap, the... Too cheap as for playing rap cow, so we... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we you can't the can't. Indonesian guy, we have the same talent. Huh? <laughs> I don't think you can get rap cow at this point. <laughs> no, but it's cool. Yeah, I yeah. love the artwork, it's really cool. Yeah, I just... Uh, it's really cool, mate. I just told him like a, like a concept that I wanted for the sleeve, and he, nice. he really started drawing, and it was really nice. Thank so you. I'm really happy. We are happy too. So, cool. Uh, this is uh, Dark Omen. Yeah. And then uh, 
You have also some other little bands, maybe you can uh, also buy uh, some little bands you're doing, like project bands, like DIY bands, like uh, who released just uh, a, a single demo. I yeah. know there was also uh, a really great AOR project you did, like uh, to, to this guy, uh, black metal, hardcore, even AOR. Like you're also a big fan of uh, bands like Journey, Ario Speedwagon, stuff like that. You like that it's stuff? It's the, yeah, this classic rock. It's yeah. Not classic. It's classic for a reason. It's yeah. classic because it's really good. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, li I like that stuff. But I have to, I have to correct you though, because Arkansas was not really my thing. Arkansas was really Perry's thing. Uh, Is it allowed that everybody knows it now? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, it was a secret thing. It was, was a secret. secret, was it still no, a secret? Anymore. Yeah, no, it's not secret anymore. Right. But uh, it's really good, actually. And there's yeah. a song. Too good for a joke. Was was a song called was "Anybody's a Winner in the USA"? Yeah, but too good for a joke. And they were big. He and Richard actually wrote that yeah, together, and great. For, for a joke indeed, and it was just just too good for a joke. It's too good. For and me. I hear, and I heard. In the grapevine that they were working on some more stuff, so I hope so. They're a big fan of Arkansas, so yeah, yeah. yeah. I want Me to too. I really it, like so that song. Uh, really, awesome. still play it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Everybody's a winner that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And it's also it's as, as, as the exact, the it's a really vibe. good vibe, yeah, yeah, really good great. journey sound. Like yeah, uh, it's awesome. Good, don't stop really American. Sound. Really American. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. In the USA. Yeah. Uh, like, okay. No. Oh, you know. Anyway, uh, we're gonna talk about the Travoltas because you were. Uh, oh, we are talk about uh, the big break, a big true. Big, uh, big success in Toronto. We already talked about yeah, the yeah. touring and stuff. Uh, why sp uh, and that you were going out in 2003? Something like 2003, yeah. I think. Yeah. And in 2003, it was also around the mid 2000s, mid 2005, 2006. You also started the Incubate Festival, right? Yeah, yeah. That was together that with time. some, together with some friends, we started it because we were really bored. And uh, there was uh, uh, Ries Doms, the uh, drummer for The Kick and also for Powerwise, uh, was putting on some shows together with uh, a friend of him called Alex. They were doing like hardcore straight edge shows uh, at Little Devil and some other venues, uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, Frank Kimenai, Kimenai yeah. who uh, uh, is the, the biggest hustler of Tilburg, uh, was putting on some shows in uh, Little Devil and Extaz and Little Devil as well. Yes. Two or 13. And uh, Joost was working at, uh, oh, he was not even in the picture in the first year. Uh, so we, what happened was we all booked shows on the same day. I, I, was, I had a, also a punk noise show. And we uh, had accidentally booked like uh, all the shows by all these people. There was like five, was four, four or five shows that were booked on the same date. We, we just uh, called each other and going like, okay, I see you have also a show booked on uh, September 19th. Yeah, you also a show booked on it. So we just decided to turn it into a festival. Oh, that's cool. That's better than the fight, uh, the, the fight uh, I have with someone. Yeah. You know? It's better to mix it, to do it together. I, but it was all people who really know each other really well. Yeah, that's great. So and, uh, that, that's the right, right thing. You know? I think so as well. And that, that, yeah. that was kind of the start of Incubate because it was just like, okay, so, oh, maybe we can add this venue. Oh, maybe they can, we can ask that bar. And then it was really quickly, it grew into a festival. Cool. It was really a lot of fun. And we always aim to do like uh, unknown bands, a lot of unknown bands, a lot of unknown artists. Uh, with some a very stupid DJ, <laughs> a great DJ who played at uh, the bowling alley. Yeah, uh, heavy we, metal bowling. We, we did heavy metal bowling, which was a lot of fun. The first years were killer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So why, why, why was it? Uh, at some point, it was completely dead. You know. Yeah, at least because. What happened? I because I was DJing, but it was it was because of me. No, <laughs> it was because of that's how it are we going with when something is successful. Yeah. The first couple of years it was all metal heads. That we, yeah. That we just even just thinking um, disco bowling, you know, because there was a thing called disco bowling at yeah. the time, and we just thought we we're just talking about it like at lunch, you know, just uh, shooting the shit, and then just we just like how about metal bowling? Why why don't we go metal bowling? And then that's how it kind of kind of uh, uh, started to exist. And in the first couple of years, it was all metalheads. Yeah, everybody then, joined. But then later, everybody was uh, like, uh, also people that were not into metal, but just wanted to experience something funny or weird or something like that, were joining I metal was a clown, of course. Yeah, but it's like, it's, it was, then, it was, then it was something 
turned into something that it was not meant to be. It was meant to be like a fun event for guys who like metal, drink beer. It was unlimited beer. You can't go wrong. Uh, and it was, it was possible in those years. It was possible. So it was really nice. And you played 20 bucks, and you could bowl, and you could uh, drink unlimited beer. And you were playing metal records, so yeah, it's And all classics were uh, played, huh? Yeah. Even this record always played for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Maybe uh, you can show it already. Yeah, I think this is one of the, this is one of, actually one of the best. I always play that. What, this Frank is one of my and him records. always ask me to play it. One of my favorite records of all time, I think, Fire Down Under by Riot. It's perfect, such a perfect hard rock record. I like yeah, yeah. The, the, the guys in the back here, they just look like regular guys, you know? You're not the guy, posing, the standing guy, there, looking the tough. The corner. Yeah. You're, you're, you're perfect neighbor. Yeah, like uh, cool guys from from from, from your city, you know. Like, uh, yeah, we happen to play in a band. It happens let's to be good. Let's yeah. wait for uh, for the presentation of this great record. Uh, okay. Uh, then there was uh, you talked about Powerwise already. Yeah, a little bit. And, yeah. And uh, we also have to rem uh, rem uh, memorial. We have a little. We talked talked about Misha Eichenauer who died. And there's someone else who died. Very important guy for you and yeah. for us all. Yeah. Uh, Salim, of course, the guitar player for Devil's Blood, was also the guitar player for Power Voice. Yeah. And uh, I remember him from even before that. He used Should to play. Sing like that? He used to play in different local bands. Red King Rising, I think, was one of his bands in uh, Eindhoven. This is the Devil's Blood single. Uh, and I remember him mostly from those years as some really fun guy yeah and, it was uh, very funny yeah yeah it was really funny and we also had, we, had, we had a lot of laughs like uh with him in the studio and, with, and just hanging out with it night over with him um that was actually all kind of before the devil's blood years because uh we noticed that he was getting a lot ser more serious with his uh static image and um I was always kind of trying to relevate, relevate that, like, 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 you know, it's just. Well, that always makes me laugh because I, I don't remember him as a, I remember him as like a really fun guy, you know, like. Is uh, it bad that we talk about it? I don't know. A lot of people, yeah, he was very known in the Watain and all the black stuff. But that's not the guy I remember, to be honest. Uh, I always, yeah, it's also the guy I remember because this was yeah. a big part of his life, of course. Yeah, but, but I it, think I lost, uh, lost already uh, out of. I lost the contact already with him a bit in those years. Yeah. And I think uh, he was not. He was in another scene. I think more black scene, and I, I kept my, my my. Uh, yeah. I, there was also uh, something, in the beginning of that that when he when he he had a, a, a black metal band called Temple of Azoth. Yeah, I know. Uh, he did like two tapes, and that, when he started with that, I, we were, we were still laughing about it. Like we were still going like. <laughs> You know, we did like a black man, like me and Richard and me and Salim were talking about it like a like 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 kind of a joke, you know, like we're doing it for fun. Yeah. And then uh, in a couple of years, of yeah, course, his life really changed, and also because he the Devil's Blood was picked up like really yeah, massively, yeah. Um, and uh, they were a really good hard rock band, I have yeah, to say. Um, but I just, I just I don't know what happened, and I thought it's, I'm just really sad that the, that we lost such a such a really nice and talented guy that's yeah. but that's the most yeah for me it's also i don't want to say too much about it because i remember selena selena was in my thoughts you know and that we had fun and that we have a lot of fun with him and laughing and great music and uh, what happened later yeah it's, uh, it was already a little bit uh, the contact was a little bit on a lower level at the yeah. time and uh, I know he's very known in the scene, especially because of that er that era. And but uh, yeah, well, we 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 would love to be that he was still with us. I think uh, Slim has, uh, was one of the greatest uh, talents of uh, our area. Yeah, definitely. Tilburg, Eindhoven, all the Brabant scene. And uh, I wish, uh, I hope uh, he's he has peace with himself now. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I cannot say it too much about it, but I think we have to remember him as always. Yeah, as the we way will. we want to remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. And I think it's also it's also um, it's also part of the reason that I really want to do this dark omen thing 
Because I, 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 we, when we were talking, we were playing, uh, when we were in the early Power Vice period, uh, everything really gets difficult when a, when a band gets successful really fast. We saw it with Power Vice, <coughs> uh, but also I think with a little bit with the Devil's Blood, it was kind of a big hype. Yeah, all all of a sudden, didn't, 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 didn't have it. But they were, it was also a really good band. Yeah, so. and they had some tele, uh, some, some some success, but not uh, the way uh, those other two bands. The yeah. Power Vice was split before it was getting. Yeah, I, I still have the I have the, the album recordings at home, and I still listen to them. Like this this is really something. This is really good. This could really be a really killer album, you know, if, uh, if they ever finished it. But uh, well, it's never going to happen. And about this uh, power vice time, because I need to ask you, it's the same that I had with some my in my past. Is uh, this is Vincent? He was really part of of power vice. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Is, is it? Is it uh, <laughs> also, I, a lot of people don't know that I actually made uh, all the music for the hill, yeah. like uh, 13 years. So that's yeah. I can imagine that yeah. some people. I I know you're a down to earth guy and not. Uh, it's not about you, about it, but about the music. Yeah. But I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's. I can imagine that it's also sometimes like I was there too, you know, and that people don't know it. Yeah, but know? for Power Vice, I never had that really. I, I, for Power Vice, it was like uh, this really Richard's thing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I just helped him in the start. That's how I feel, you know, like oh, I just okay, helped yeah. him. Uh, we, I, but it was still fun because I, I still have the demos where, I, where you can hear um, Hand of Glory. That's the first uh, recordings of Hand of Glory. I played the guitars, you know. I played the riff. So uh, he just told me like it should sound like something like this, something like that, and I, I just made it happen. Um, but yeah, that was it's just uh, it's just how it goes. And it's okay, you know. Uh, well, and then uh, yeah, Paul Weiss for me, it's over. To be honest, I would love to see a reissue of the uh, uh, an album or uh, that it will be released. But for me, the, it's not needed to be uh, that this band is over. For me, it's I always like to re to to be part of of reunions of bands I haven't seen or want mm -hmm. to see again. But for me, Powerwise is not like the Devil's Blood. It's not without Celine. It's not possible. Yeah. So Powerwise, for me, don't. I, even I love the band. For me, it's, it's I'm glad I was there. But it's over. Yeah, but uh, also the album doesn't have vocals, so there's an instrumental album, yeah. but there's no vocals on it. So just I think it's, it's, it's I, I think, think it, everybody made just a killer demo, and yeah. it would be great if it's gonna see the light in a great, uh, and not CDR or uh, you know DI cassette. It would be great yeah. if you see it in a great stuff in a great edition. But I think that's the only thing we can uh, expect from Paul Weiss. Eh? I think just to uh, play the demo again and. Uh, Think about how what what it could John have been. John will do it. John will do it. Yeah. Yeah. John <laughs> Milkman will do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. This is uh, uh, Salim. Then uh, we're gonna talk about the. Uh, we already talked about all these bands we had. Uh, what do you think about the Tilburg scene? What uh, what what may what what's 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 the? You think we have a good scene? At this point, I don't even know anymore. I, I, I think we, uh, we used to have. Uh, I think we have a good scene. Yeah, I think we have a really a couple of good bands. I think uh, uh, Kevin and uh, Twan and all the other guys yeah. that are doing uh, used to do Sauron. They're, uh, they're back. Oh, they're back. Uh, I remember. They are back. Sorry, they're gonna play Throne Fest in the uh, in Belgium together with Godmar, who also on my label, yeah. and Attila uh, with Tormentor, yeah. and some other things. Mm -hmm. But uh, so that's and they were also Funeral Goat. I really like the Funeral Goat album, by the way. Ibex Monora. Yeah, I, yeah. I, that, so they are doing really, working really hard and uh, doing some really good stuff, I think. And then we also st we still have like a band like a Crustacean. It's like a really good trash, trash Slayer, 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 yeah. Slayer, Slayer style Slayer, band. Yeah, we've been still, we are still writing songs and still recording, and they're still they're working on a new album. Band, huh? They're little. Underrated band, eh? Very underrated band, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah we, I, I, always, I used to live with uh, their guitar player, uh, Michel, in a, one, in a house, like a, a student place. And uh, from, that, from that point on, we were also uh, really close friends. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I recorded some of their stuff as well, like uh, some of their demos. 
but that's also very, way before they made any albums. Let's check that out because they're really good. If you uh, seek a station CD, you can buy it. It's guaranteed to be a good CD, good, good, good album. And they're working on something new, so um, I'm looking forward to it. And Antoine, uh, my youth friend, he uh, is of course a Legion of the Dance Solver now. Yeah, we don't both have to doing skip really that. good. Legion of the Dance, really good. Uh, Finally, did his uh, did what he really wanted. Yeah. Even his mom, I know even his mom. Hi, Cory. If you read it, <laughs> let's see it. Cory, uh, Cory was uh, telling my mom because they're friends with my mom, and she told me and my mom like Tron, uh, finally did what he really wanted. He's yeah. a musician for uh, for a living. Yeah. Finally, clap yeah. for him, my brother Tron. I think so as well. But it's also a really good good band, you know, really solid. Uh, professional, Play time mode good sounding, year. yeah. So that's that's great. Uh, more power to you. And then uh, the Dutch scene. Uh, I love the Dutch scene, and I love the as a, because I'm Dutch. But I always disap for some reason I'm also disappointed in you, uh, in my people from my country because I think there's uh, a lack of interest or knowledge about a lot of music styles we like. Yeah. <laughs> Traditional heavy metal It's never that big, was never that big in Holland. No, no, definitely. Uh, ban also, bands like uh, s the bands like you, uh, like No Effects, Green Day, the stuff like Travolta's made is also not very known in Holland. <laughs> Even no. the, our favorite music, it's, yeah, I like it, but it's also not my, my main thing, I think. Yeah. I like it, but it's. Then there was a lot of. So I think that the, the Dutchies are very strong with uh, connected to the Bay Area and uh, the New York hardcore, which stars are also love a lot. Biohazard, Exodus, uh, everything. I think this is really something where the people here like mm -hmm. that battle. Yeah. But I think black metal too. But I think black trash, I, the style I really love, like nocturnal disaster stuff like that. Yeah. It's not really big here. No. And also the stuff like the really traditional spandex heavy metal. It's also not very really, no uh, and glam metal either and AOR either. Well, t Tilburg, I always saw it like this. I'm not if I'm not right, correct me. We were never a city with heavy metal. We if I, I followed the Dutch the Tilburg scene since I was young, mm -hmm. and heavy metal, not much. We had no. hard rock, Bad Habit, yeah, Red Dragon, <coughs> yeah, stuff like that. But real heavy metal, not that. Eh? No, we never had like a big. Heavy metal band, but we had in the north we had Emerald Vortex. Yeah, yeah. So that's a little bit uh, a sadness for me. But uh, on hardcore, uh, death metal, we we beat everyone. Huh? Yeah, definitely. I think so. And uh, it was also um, a really booming vibe, and a lot of young bands also in the yeah. '90s of playing together, helping each other, putting on shows together. Yeah. So that was all. But we never had like a big metal, heavy metal band or yeah. a traditional metal band. Yeah, Power Bus was. Uh, the Power Bus came that, close, but it was. Changing it, that, yeah. also, also a little bit more Eindhoven. Yeah. But for, for Tilburg, it's like. And there were a few bands, but I don't say names, but I think there were a few bands. I don't want to talk shit about any band here. But there were a few bands, but that was student heavy metal, and I don't like student heavy metal. You know, I don't say names, <laughs> but uh, you know, this. this uh, Maybe the people know what, uh, which bands I mean, but it's like not real heavy metal, it's more Weekend Heart Warriors. We had some bands in there <laughs> 10 years ago. Okay. But, but anyway, this is a uh, win because I had no money for a ticket and my parents were didn't want to join me. So yeah. I was the whole day looking in the between the gates, seeing yeah, yeah. and Halloween. But you were in. I was in. I think the first big show I went to was uh, Dynamo in 86 or 87. Yeah. I think the year with Testament and Striper. I'd say 87. 87? Was it Bible or Bible or Bible uh, touring. Uh, touring, yeah. yeah. And uh, the year after when we when I when was Monster of Rock, of course, I, I just saved up. And I I, I just I had to be there, it was like uh, no 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 uh, way around it. And um, we, we it was kinda of strange if you if you think about it. It's in the, that was like eighty eight. And uh, we took a bus to Tilburg. Yeah. We came. We came to the to the station. Yeah. And then we were escorted by police to the to the stadium. And it was also uh, uh, some stores closed there. The, they uh, made uh, uh, 
hooted before the window because they think Tilburg, the, the Hard Rockers will destroy the whole town, you know? Insane. Yeah, well, I, I don't even know why. We were escorted by police with like, the songs. It was even on the channel. On the, on yeah, the, yeah, it was on, the, on TV. On the net, on the yeah. Like, the, uh, it was such a calm uh, day yeah. and uh, only two uh, pocket uh, thieves were... Uh, Nothing were, happened. Were, 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 were attacked. Were, 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 but everybody, was thing, everybody yeah. who's ever been to like a metal show, you know that nothing's going to happen because it's metal. Yeah, the people are all the same. You know, they're all like uh, they all have each other's backs and they're all friendly and they just drink beer and, yeah. and have a good time. So, but uh, I think it's also the reason why the, the the people from the town, the the people around the stadium, they probably asked, uh, complained that it's never again. Yeah. Because it was the plan to go to be back in 1989, yeah. but it wasn't. But it, but it was, and there's still the plans every year to be back again. Eh? <laughs> rock. I hope someday will it will 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 make. Yeah, I would have to. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. Maybe 25. I think if we've only passed 25 years now. Mm -hmm. We have to wait till uh, 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's 30 years. 25 years. 88. 88. Yeah. 2000. Oh, the time goes fast. Oh shit! <laughs> anyway, uh, let's. Uh, I want to ask you. Uh, yeah, uh, a I brought little some bit records. about your records. Uh, uh, your favorite records, and you brought them yourself. Yeah, and you I, 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 it's, it's kind of difficult to bring my favorite records right, because it's, it's uh, no typical order. Yeah, it? no, but it's, it's also it's on it. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's Pink Floyd. No, I think it's something like. Uh, uh, I can't Maybe read what it says, but it's, it's something compilation. -y. Maybe it's uh, Berlin Stemberg. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. It could be something like that. No, I just brought some records yeah. that I play a lot and uh, I keep coming back to. Because, uh, uh, yeah, the favorite records. I have so many favorite records. Like you, I have a yeah. big collection and I, 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 just, I just listen to music every day, like for hours. So. Uh, I think very important. This was a very important record for me. I come, coming, keep coming back to it. Riot, Fire Down Under. Uh, if you put on Sgt. Tequila, you know that this is. You, you listen to it the first time, you know it's going to be a good record. You know, this is still uh, in Dutch. Gilders, 19, uh, 19 Gilder. 19 Gilder. Kok by Tommy. Bought it at uh, Tommy in Tilburg. I will keep that. So. <laughs> no, no, for the, for the, for the. I have it myself, so. Just be careful. Yeah. Um, I put it here. Another room. record that I keep coming back to, and it's not so so much known, is uh, Montrose. Montrose Rock the Nation. And uh, I, uh, this is with Sammy Hagar on vocals and uh, Ronnie Montrose on Van guitar. Hale. Yeah, Sammy, Sammy Hagar went for the, on for the, the lakes. Uh, went, went on to uh, Van Halen, of course. But this guitar sound on this album is so heavy and so. Rocking and it's it's, it's uh, uh, produced by Todd, Ted Templeman, who also produced Van Halen. Uh, and this is '73, and this is like a, uh, this is like a real uh, for me this is a real hard rock classic. Uh, you don't see many people about it. No, you don't hear many people about it. I know, but this is I think this is uh, I'm just gonna offend some people, but this is better than the first two Van Halen albums. I'm I'm pretty sure of it. So if you see this record, uh, be sure to get it because it's really good. I don't know if it's ever been on the CD, but I, I just I have this vinyl for a long time, as you can see, and it's will be stayed will be stayed with me until the day I die, and I'll probably play it like uh, every week some, at some point. My favorite song on, on this is Space Station Number no. Five, which is uh, has such a great guitar intro. Okay. Um, same. Era a little bit later maybe. Uh, I could I could have brought any Tendency album, but I brought this one, Bad Reputation, uh, mainly because uh, I think this is like a really this is like a perfect album. All there are no bad songs on this. It's all super, super good. And the thing that really gets me is the song number two, Bad Reputation. Uh, the drums on this song is are like the best drumming I've ever heard in my life. I think. It's not there's no, no solos or strange stuff it's just really on point every every hit is like it's like perfect uh, and it has dancing in the moonlight which is also a really nice ballad um, but uh, the, the key track for me is the title track bad reputation it's, it's, it's just so beautiful um, and the sound is really nice I like the sound it's like a really 70s warm but heavy sound 
So I'm just going to give us Steve put it back later. Um, then we're going on to a little bit more, a little bit heavier music. I think this one is really important. I think it's you know, the best thing is called by uh, by the by the era because this is uh, you you do it in the right the right line. I think. I think I think I do. Yeah, this is uh, 83. I think. Yeah. Um, Diamond Dreamer. And I think what this thing is uh, this is Diamond Dreamer by Picture. And I think when I heard this first the first time, I was I think I was 15, and uh, uh, my sister had a boyfriend and he made me a tape with like some hard rock songs and i just couldn't believe that this was a dutch band because it sounds so super professional this is like a this is like a really traditional heavy metal record yeah one of the best one of the best super heavy very popular in brazil heavy band. sounding you know good i like the vocals on this the it's by smulik eh? smulik yeah, yeah. it was I a think, rising singer Great i think melodic uh, voice He's one of my one of my favorite uh, singers in the Dutch band ever. You died, huh? You did? Yeah. Oh wow, that's a shame. This it was this is really something else. It's really next level, I think, for Dutch. Mm -hmm. It's also recorded at Wistelwood uh, Studios, which is one of the yeah one of the biggest, most expensive studios yeah. we have. Vengeance, you can Halloween, hear it. Uh, yeah. Vengeance, Halloween, Van der Berg, those bands. Uh, yeah. The bigger, uh, bigger bands. The bigger Netherlands. bands. Yeah. But this is probably the heaviest of those. Uh, and then we go go to this beautiful artwork, and I draw I drew myself <laughs> because I lost. I don't know what happened with the with the original cover anymore. I think it got either got water on it or I lost it. So I had to draw this from memory because I was just you know when you're that's what you do when you're 14, and you just I just remembered it was kind of an explosion here and something with letters here and destruction. I couldn't even remember what the logo should look like, and. Um, this is 86 uh, this is I I really like this this uh, version a lot better than the re-recorded version did you hear the re-recorded versions yeah it's on CD yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, don't like it I, I I have to I think I have the original also here this is like uh, for me this is uh, so much better sounding actually because it, it, it has a really the guitar tones are really nice the bass sounds really good I don't I don't understand why you would re-record it but yeah, but musicians have always another opinion than fans. I know, yeah, yeah. That's but why I said the Germans will go for the original songs and the, the Dutchies will go for the... Uh, yeah. For probably the also the musicians go for the official song or for the new songs and the fans maybe for the old songs. It's it's mostly the two, two sides of the, the yeah, 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 yeah. coin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the intro and then Curse the Gods, also the way that it, yes. ah, I love it, it. it crosses over and it starts with the zicker, ticker, 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 ticker. Yeah. It's so heavy. It's awesome. It just blew my mind when I heard that for the first time. It was like pfft, amazing. It's coming yeah. here. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Could be there. Yeah, we yeah. still have room. No, it's it's, it's, it's planned, going to be there. Yeah, yeah. Fenton will do it. Nice. Yeah. And, and then, um, then the, this this record is also very special for me. Uh, Dimension Hatreds by Voivod. I think this is the best Voivod record. Mm -hmm. And I. Uh, it's from 1987, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, 88 actually. It was recorded 87, released 88, and um, what I really like about it is that it's really the bridge between their earlier, like more punkish stuff, and their uh, progressive, progressive stuff that's that's coming after, which I don't like that much. But this is like the, I think it's like nothing a, face is cool, uh, it's still cool. I feel. Yeah, yeah, it's all right, but it's this this one is for me is the one. Yeah. This one and uh, Killing Technology, that's right before this one, are, are the ones that's, yeah, that yeah. I like best. And uh, I like just like the songs. I can hum every guitar solo and melody on this one because I played it to death when uh, when it came out. Uh, this was like for me like a blueprint of uh, what how uh, distinguished and how uh, refined thrash could be, or something like that. So and there's a lot. Two last questions. Yeah. What's your life after besides music? Uh, I work. I just have a. <laughs> It's, it's something refreshing about because uh, when I when I played in Travolta, uh, I uh, made music for a living, um, and I didn't want to do that anymore. So I, this was a really uh, choice for me to go to, after Travolta, go back to school and get a, a degree in uh, teaching. Uh, so I work now. Um, I start uh, a new job actually in a, in a month at the Art Academy, uh, where I teach art and film and uh, uh, that's what I've been doing for the last years actually 
and I really love it. And uh, uh, besides that, I'm, I'm married. I have a young daughter. How old so is she? I, she's three. Three. So I want to really spend as much time with her as possible. Yeah. And uh, I just want to see. I want her to, to experience the, the early years. You know, like because uh, yeah, this goes so it's just it's cliche, but everything moves so fast. It's like we were talking about '88. It's like you can you know. How, how long uh, it just you know, blows no, my mind how long that how long ago that is and, like, and how, how fresh that memory also still is for me so uh time moves so so very quickly that i i want to at least spend uh, as much moments with her as, as possible so and then the last thing uh what are your musical goals and uh, <laughs> goals and wishes right now i'm uh, really working hard to finish the uh, um, dark omen album and uh, to prepare the stillborn CD. Uh, I'm also uh, finishing up a video for uh, a Dark Omen track uh, called Nebuchadnezzar, which is uh, a lot of work and I'm still working on it. I'll be, I'll be there someday. Um, and uh, after that, I think uh, the plans are to do, uh, when, it, when it's possible again, in this, uh, this entire madness is over to do a, a Dark Omen tour. Um, to at least play some, some some shows in Europe again, uh, and um, that, will, that that will probably be two thousand twenty two because right now we can do anything. So uh, we just work. I just work on music and um, hope it'll be finished sometime next year. Okay, thank you very much for your interview. No, thank you, man. For the passion of the fashion, keep like, it true. Like, subscribe, and share. Hands up. Ciao. Till next time. Thanks. There's no